Aloha and welcome everyone to Hawaii Energy Policy Forum's annual briefing. It's great to see so many of you here and I'm really looking forward to today's presentations and conversations. I'm Sherilyn Wee. I'm an assistant specialist at the Public Policy Center, also co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum with Mike Hamnett. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum is a program within the College of Social Sciences. Uh, we convene a collaborative group of over 40 stakeholders in business, academia, government, and the community. And we're working towards information sharing and collaboration in order to inform decision making. So today, we have all come together to present this annual briefing. Um, Sharon Moriwaki, Senator Moriwaki, I just want to take a moment to um, acknowledge and recognize you, uh, Senator Moriwaki, who has led the forum between 2002 to 2018. Thank you for all the great work that you've done in the energy space, and we're really glad that you could join us here today. This year's theme, Bending the Curve, Energy, Transportation, and Climate Change Policy, focuses on aligning these policies with the needs of Hawaii residents, while acknowledging that there's a significant gap between our 2045 carbon neutrality goals and where we are today. So for this afternoon's discussion, we have four guiding questions. The first is, where are we on the trajectories, both short-term and long-term, and where do we need to be? Are we doing enough to achieve our clean energy goals that we have established? Is it even possible to meet our goals? And if so, what will it take? And then lastly, what about other pressing needs in Hawaii? We're going to get started and kick things off right away. Um, I'm really honored to be able to introduce um, Governor David Ige. Um, so on behalf of the forum, please join me in welcoming um, Governor Ige. Thanks, Sherilyn, for that uh, introduction. I, I did also want to acknowledge uh, Sharon Moriwaki, who um, um, convinced me on several occasions to come and participate in this uh, policy forum. I really do appreciate the uh, University of Hawaii and the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum for uh, your advocacy, and I think most importantly for your commitment to co collaboration and to engaging all of the stakeholders in our energy policy. As we enter 2020, Hawaii has much to celebrate as a leader in energy transformation, uh, and much of that work is really due to many of you here in the audience. You know, I'm proud uh, to be governor of the state of Hawaii, and when I go up to the National Governors Association or, or Western Governors, uh, I'm really proud of the work that we have been able to do together. Uh, I did want to thank uh, the legislators who are here who uh, had a big part in setting out a bold agenda uh, for all of us. You know, I'm really proud to be governor of the state of Hawaii because I do know that much of our energy policy is driven by the core values that we share as a people. Most importantly, that commitment that we want to make um, our communities better, and that we want to be part of the solution in finding a way that Hawaii can be a more sus sustainable and resilient community uh, moving forward. As you know, we are a leader in several different ways. Hawaii was the first to embrace the goals of the Climate Alliance, and we all know that the United States has kind of bailed out of that. Um, certainly, there is a void, uh, and the U.S. Climate Alliance, of which Hawaii is a part, a bipartisan uh, group of states that felt compelled to step forward to ensure that the agenda of fighting climate change and global warming uh, can be taken up by uh, subnational organizations, such as states and other entities, uh, because we do know that in order to save the planet, um, those of us in the U.S. really need to lead the way. I wanted to welcome Ms. Amy Barnes from the California-China Climate Institute. Thank you for your participation in today's um, session. And uh, uh, also Jeremy Tarr from uh, the Go Office of Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your coming and sharing with us and sharing the things that you've done. I've had the opportunity, and, and um, Governor Cooper has joined the U.S. Climate Alliance as well. I think for, for us chief executives um, in, in many states, um, we do recognize that um, action is needed now, and climate change is a huge uh, threat uh, to the planet, and most importantly that we need to take bold action to reduce greenhouse gases uh, and carbon emissions as we uh, move forward. 
Um, I would want to note that I really believe that a big reason for Hawaii's success is the co collaborative nature of our community uh, and to organizations like the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And again, I, I thank you for uh, being commit committed to engage all stakeholders uh, give everyone a voice, and I think most importantly, uh, for being willing to raise the most challenging issues before us. Uh, Sherilyn Wee, thank you for taking over for uh, Senator Moriwaki. I know that you do an able job moving forward. Um, I um, am, was also happy, as you know, um, last year the legislature passed House Bill 852 which I was proud to sign into law as Act 122, uh, which really created and reconfigured the State Energy Office uh, and directed them to promote energy efficiency, renewable energy, uh, and clean transportation to help achieve a resilient, clean energy, decarbonized economy. After interviewing many uh, and a uh, extensive search, uh, I appointed uh, Scott Glenn to be the Chief Energy Officer. Uh, certainly there are a uh, couple things that attracted me and convinced me uh, that Scott would be uh, the perfect uh, person to lead the State Energy Office. Um, he had served as my uh, representative in the U.S. Climate Alliance and has been very engaged. Um, on behalf of the state of Hawaii with those partners in the uh, Climate Alliance. And we were uh, very early on, uh, one of the earliest states to join the alliance. Uh, and Scott has been very engaged with um, the alliance of bipartisan states, uh, really understanding what each other is doing, most importantly, uh, trying to create structures and opportunities that we can share information and most importantly, help each other succeed. You know, we know that um, climate change and global warming is a team sport. Uh, it's not something that any one of us uh, can solve by ourselves, but most importantly, uh, it will take the collective will of all of us to make significant progress. You know, I uh, appointed Scott to this position um, because I felt that he would be the best for uh, the office. Uh, he has been uh, the executive director at the Office of Environmental Quality Control over the last several years. And I've been impressed by uh, his collaborative commitment uh, to engaging all stakeholders, uh, to taking on the tough issues, uh, and most importantly, uh, to be able to find solutions that allows us to move forward. Uh, you know, when I first appointed Scott, um, everybody said that the environmental impact statements and, and all of the challenges uh, surrounding our environmental uh, protection would uh, be one of the toughest issues to deal with. Uh, and I'm proud that Scott was able to work with all stakeholders, find common ground between uh, environmentalists uh, and developers, and most importantly, um, came up with a set of rules, I think, that balance uh, the interest of, um, of protecting the environment uh, with allowing uh, sensible uh, regulation um, that would allow us to move forward. I know that all of you are here to uh, listen to the experts that have been assembled, uh, and I really want to thank you for your commitment to our clean energy future. Uh, the goals and challenges um, we uh, see before us you know, I'm proud of the progress that we made, but I also acknowledge that there is much, much, much more work to be done. Uh, I look forward to working with all of you to achieve the goals that we all share to transform our energy futures moving forward. Uh, and I did want to finally just thank the Energy Policy Forum here again, once again, for your commitment to engaging stakeholders, uh, for providing a forum that we can share ideas and best practices, uh, but most importantly, uh, to be a part of finding the solution, of uh, finding a way that we can all be committed uh, to a renewable energy future, but most importantly, uh, to saving our planet and stopping climate change and global warming.
uh, aloha and mahalo, and thank you so much for all of those who will be here today. Thank you, Governor Ige. i now like to invite Nicole Lowen, Representative Lowen, House Chair on the Committee for Energy and Environmental Protection, to say a few words. Welcome, Nicole. Aloha. I was uh, instructed to be brief, so I will try to do that. Um, so welcome to the Capitol. We're happy to host the... Um, Energy Policy Forum here, and we've this is uh, one of a series, I guess, of events that uh, the Policy Forum has planned this year. So it's been, I think, a really active year for the um, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and I want to thank them for all the work they put into organizing this and helping educate everybody. Uh, I also want to quickly thank my office manager, Miley, who is not in the room right now, but she just did a lot of work on the logistics of helping schedule the rooms, etc. So from my perspective, these issues that we're talking about here today, energy, transportation, and climate change policy, um, are top of mind to some of the most important things that we have to work on this session. Um, as we increasingly feel very real impacts from climate change here at home, widespread coral bleaching events, more frequent, more damaging storms, coastal erosion, sea level rise, and uncomfortably hot and humid weather, we have to explore every tool that we have to do our part to mitigate climate change to move faster on reaching 100% renewable power generation, and to transition the transportation sector from one that runs on fossil fuels to one that's powered by clean energy. The legislature in recent years has set really ambitious goals, 100% renewable energy, a zero emissions carbon neutral economy by 2045, a net zero school energy campus, and net zero energy school campuses, sorry, by 2035. And last year, we passed bills to further energy efficiency, to create incentives for the build out of electric vehicle infrastructure, and the adoption of EVs for government fleets. Uh, we created a reinvigorated energy office, which the governor mentioned, with a clear mission to support the state's energy and climate policy goals. And we commissioned a study of carbon pricing policies to see how we might implement a carbon price here in Hawaii. You know, someone said to me as we were talking out in the hallway, that, um, that as they see it, the legislature has really led on these issues um, you know, in recent years, that we've uh, led the discussion in, in passing these ambitious goals and um, have brought the administration and the private sector along, not always willingly. But I feel really happy to say that I see that really changing. And I think that everyone's on the same page moving forward now from the private sector to the administration. Um, I think that the realization of how important it is to address these issues has really crystallized, and it's exciting to see how much the momentum is picking up and how quickly we can move forward um, on, this is on these issues. So this year, we'll continue our work on these topics with a particular focus for me on trying to ensure that government agencies are doing the things we're asking the private sector to do. So increasing efficiency of our own buildings, tran electrifying transportation fleets, developing resilient infrastructure and planning ahead for sea level rise and natural disasters. Um, you know, Hawaii is a leader, as I've, we've all said several times now, in energy and climate policy. And we know that what we do here in Hawaii has ripple effects across the globe. So we need to continue to lead on these issues so that we can avoid catastrophic climate impacts. And um, you know, hopefully that what we do here will inspire action in other places. So I hope what everyone learns here today will um, help contribute to that work.